you, like me, probably have certain things in your life that you put a particular filter on, a particular lens to make it seem maybe a little bit better than what it actually is. We may find ourselves considering if only we were in a certain place or had achieved a certain thing or did something with a particular person or were able to get to a certain place with a particular person, be it in a relationship or a friendship or a professional interaction, whatever it might be, it can be very, very easy to romanticize where we aren't. But why does the grass always seem greener? Is this simply something that our monkey brains tend us towards because it might make our opportunities more favorable if we are seeing something that has an opportunity to provide us value? Or is it just this kind of uh, randomness, this kind of thing that can occur occasionally that is a function of our hopefulness or maybe our insecurities or maybe a slew of other things? What does this mean? Why does this happen? For me, I chalk it up to this almost childlike wonder, this naivety almost, this innocence that things have this magic property to them, that they are above or beyond what regular day-to-day -day life would suggest that if we were to be experiencing them, they would present themselves as such. What is the criteria by which we experience awe? In this kind of context, I feel like we are experiencing the awe of the potential of what something is or what it could be, but only because it is wrapped in the confines of the model that we currently have of it. That is to say that because we don't have a sufficiently explored version of the reality, we can make all of these simplifications and almost generalizations around what the thing is so that it is appearing to be different than what it actually is. Now, I recognize that that was just a lot of words to fundamentally refer back to the idea of the grass is greener on the other side. This idea is obviously so well known because it is so universally experienced. And in that kind of way, I feel like it's important to remind ourselves of that reality, to remind ourselves of the nature of our monkey brains and the nature of how we can tend to forget that certain things we see in our lives, these objects, these models of particular people or places or things or potential experiences we have an opportunity to engage with are not as they seem until we've actually been there and done that and spoken to that person and gotten to know this situation. In that kind of way, I feel that it's important to withhold judgment or to withhold expectations of any of these situations before we actually go into them. Because if we are to hold too much preconceived notions, then that can sway how we interact with them in the moment as compared to simply being present and being as attentive and focused on being in the moment with this individual, this opportunity, this experience. I know for me, this has been a very interesting thing as of late, recently having come back from my exchange in South Korea earlier than I was originally planning, but I think back and I reflect onto how I was preparing for this exchange for so long and I built up all of these ideas from all of the content that I was consuming and all of the little interactions with people that I had leading up to it. And then to actually get there and go through the process of moving countries essentially, it was very interesting for me to see the contrast in what I was expecting and what was the reality, especially as this was my first time going overseas to be international. It was very eye-opening to not only see the differences in culture and, and all of these very important enriching aspects of travel, but 
to see myself reflected in the expectations I held. Sitting back and thinking about how all of the ways that I would be different as a result of finding myself in a new geographical location, one that I'd never explored before and had zero connections to or ties to any people. In that kind of way, sure, it is a very important and good development to be able to have that experience. But one of the biggest things, alongside being extraordinarily grateful for the chance to do this and all of the friends and experiences and things that I was able to be a part of while I was in South Korea, one of the biggest things that I returned with, one of the biggest lessons, was that it's not that important necessarily where you are, at least in my case, being in Australia, being in Gisborne, as compared to being in South Korea, in Taejeon, with KAIST. At least in that context, for my personal situation, whether or not I was to go to a party or a get together in Seoul or in Melbourne, or I was to watch a movie with some friends at the, at the cinemas there or here in the city, it's all fundamentally made with common features. The only real difference I feel is with the people that you can tend to share it with. And in that kind of way, Sure, they may play the similar kinds of roles for you in that context of going and seeing a movie or going and grabbing some dinner or going out to an event somewhere. But it's really just realizing that there is a similarity between whether you're going out somewhere in Korea, in America, in any of these other kind of more, you could say, first world countries there is a lot more similarities than differences. And in that kind of way, to assume that it'll be very life-changing and very distinct between the two geographical locations, I think is mainly a function of ignorance. I want to emphasize, this isn't saying that everything is the same or that it's not worthy of experiencing that contrast but it has just simply been quite interesting for me to reflect on how we have this propensity, this tendency to want to see something as completely different, whether that's from media and whether that's from the influences of certain people that we see or certain movies we might react to or even things like anime or other kind of things in that regard. It has been a very curious finding of mine to reflect on the nature of those common features. One other very important realization I've had that's along a similar kind of vein as different experiences having common features is that whether or not it turns out that a particular person leaves my life or a particular opportunity is no longer available or something happens where another engagement or endeavor doesn't work out or somehow leaves my life, that in that way, I'll be okay. There is other opportunities. There is other people. There are other things to do. And having come from being in one place my entire life, having built up a network of people and places and habits and hobbies to completely take all of those things, pack them in a suitcase and transport them to a completely foreign place with none of those things. To then be able to have all of those things grow and those connections develop and those habits and hobbies form, I know that I will be okay regardless of where I go or what I do. And in that kind of way, it is a kind of optimism. It is a kind of confidence to know that regardless of what happens, regardless of who's in my life or what I'm doing, things will be okay. And I can only hope that the more people try to explore and consider things like this, that they will be able to have that confidence in themselves as well. And yes, I recognize that 
in my current personal circumstances that this may be coming from a somewhat privileged place. I'm sure that it is. But I do also think that regardless of the situation that we find ourselves in, that this is probably the best kind of mindset to have, to know that regardless of what happens to us, we'll be okay. And to have a confidence that no matter what we are going through, that no matter how hard some things may seem in the situation or how great some other things may seem if it were different, that that may not be the case, that if we are to simply try to make the most and make the best of our current situation, that any potential future things that may happen have less weight, they have less of an impact on us, whether it be positive or negative. In that kind of way, this is obviously coming with the huge caveat that no, I can't know your particular situation. I don't know exactly what you're going through. But I can only assume, I can only gauge based off my own experience and the experiences that I've heard of others. So naturally take this with many grains of salt. However, I also don't think that this romanticization is necessarily a terrible thing either. To have something to look forward to, to hold some kind of magic or mystery still in the world can be great, can be really good to have and to hold, to embrace that more childlike wonder and curiosity of something being so foreign and new and almost indescribable because of its nature to be so different. That can be great. But as long as it doesn't overshadow our capacity to appreciate and to be grateful for what we currently have in our regular environment. So you don't necessarily have to stop romanticizing where you want. All I would say, all I would recommend is to be aware of it, because then you can use that to your benefit. Now for a quick little catch up, I can hear you saying, wow. Matt, I feel like there's just something that's different about you, but I can't really put my finger on it. Being me, I don't like to ruin surprises, so I don't want to give it away, but the hint I'll give you, it's probably of a stylistic nature. So I'll leave that up to you to find out. But as I am back in Australia, I am back onto working on a lot of different projects right now. So making videos is obviously one of them but that comes with a lot of other things that I'm intending on doing as well. So whether or not this will be a week to week endeavor or not is yet to be seen, but I am very keen. I've recently gotten a new camera and a couple of other things. So I'm wanting to definitely be putting more things out in more kind of ways differently than I would have done in the past as that may sound a little bit hypocritical coming at the end of a video that is very much the same as what I've done in the past, but stay tuned. Otherwise, I am interested to still get back into this Discord community that we've been slowly, slowly developing that has been a little bit dormant for a little bit as I haven't been active on there. But now coming back to things, it's really good to be able to reconnect with people and get things kind of restarted and get things going again. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here and do more than you think you can.